Hello, welcome back. We're at the place now where we have um, created all the components of building an application and the hard part next is to how to put it all together and how to have everything see everything in kind of an organized way. So we're also at the place where we go from correctness, it's either right or it's wrong, it works or it doesn't work, and we're entering the area of best practice. So uh, what is a good way of doing something as opposed to the correct way of doing something? So uh, this also has lots of discussion around it, sometimes heated discussion about what is a good way of doing this. And so keep in mind as you're watching this that this is, um, <coughs> excuse me, this is our first crack at putting together a Java application that uses um, a user interface and a database and something in the middle. So a three-layer architecture separates the code for the user interface and I made three packages here inside of my source folder to demonstrate this. This is a very small demonstration. So the user interface code, um, if you isolate it and then decide later you'd like to use a different kind of a front end. You should be able to unplug the front end and put a new front end on. This is part of the the objective of this design. And people might call this the top layer or the front end. It's at the bottom of these three packages and I'm saying it's the top layer. But don't be confused. The bottom layer is the one where the database is and people typically will call this the data layer. The middle layer is where you put all of your custom classes, so custom business classes. Where do you implement the business logic for your application that meets all of the rules? So you talk to the database on the bottom layer, you talk to the user at the top layer, and then the middle layer talks to both the bottom layer and the top layer. So there's a, a commonly accepted best practice that the user interface does not speak directly to the data layer. So code in the user interface package does not call methods in the data layer. The business layer, the middle tier, will talk to the top and the bottom. So let's look at um, this very simple piece of code. Um, I didn't have really any objective other than to show you how this works, so I just copied a bit of code from a previous application that has a, a user interface, and when you run this, it has the main method in it. It pops up a, a JFrame that has two buttons in it, and um, I had no real objective to design a user interface there except to show you that there is one. And then in the event handler, and there's going to be, of course, lots of event handlers in the top layer, the user interface layer, I put this line of code, which we will revisit. This is a call to something from the middle layer. So far, so good. So let's go and look at the middle layer. And uh, one of the problems that people have when they're getting started is how do you make the data available in a nice way, in an organized way, to the user interface? And there's a pattern for doing this. Um, well, first let's look at the custom business class. You'll have a bunch of these and they'll be complicated for your um, a large multi-layer application. We have one class that has one instance variable, so it's a person's name. It couldn't be any smaller and still have um, a custom business class. Now the application data. So I made this class. This is the interesting one. <coughs> the app data. We're, we're going to use a pattern called the singleton. 
and the singleton pattern means that there will only ever be one instance of this class for the entire running of the application. So look at the characteristics of this. We have a constructor that's private. So no one will be able from outside this class to make an instance of this class. And we will call our own constructor one time only. Now look at this variable here. Private static, the data type app data, the variable name app data, initialized to null. Of course, it would have been initialized to null anyway, but I wanted to make that explicit. Because when someone, suppose you're in the user interface and you want to get a hold of the app data, you're going to call this public static method called get app data. So get app data will return a reference to the variable app data. The very first time this get app data method is called, we'll check and see if it refers to null. It will only return, it will only evaluate to null the first time. And in that case, we'll call the constructor for the class that we're in, the app data class. So this is the single instance of this class that will be created the first time someone says, get the app data. And every subsequent time someone says, give me the app data, we'll just return that one object that was constructed on the first call. So this is the singleton pattern. So in, here's the instance variable that represents the data itself. So it's an array list of person objects, which I called people. <clears throat> so suppose we have in this application, we might have a bunch of data. Um, this is the simplest possible one that I could think of. We have one list of people, uh, person objects. And that's the data that we want to pass around from this middle layer, allow the top layer to have access to the data, and the bottom layer to have access to the data. OK, so far so good. I want to go back now to the user interface code and look at that one line that was interesting. Inside of the event handler, we say app data the name of the class dot get app data. So what does that give us? That gives us the instance, the single instance of the app data. And then we can call any of the methods that are in that. So we called the method add person constructed a new object with the name Bob in it. And we added it to our list of person objects. So this is the singleton model. We have a public static method called getAppData. That means if it's public and static, it can be called from anywhere. It will always give us that one object of the application's data. And then we can do whatever we want with that object. So this is kind of a nice way of passing around the, um, the data for the application and doing it in a way that you won't have stale data in some places. And it's, it's a practice. It's not a, a correct and an incorrect. And I'm hoping that people who watch this will comment on it and say, oh, no, I, would, I think you should be doing it this way. And... Um, I think that's a very valuable exercise. So, the app data singleton. And here is the add person method down here at the bottom in the app data class. So, when we talk to the database, we're going to use a similar pattern. 
And this one is um, really fairly controversial. Um, but remember that this is our first crack at making a layered application. Whenever you go and look for tutorials on how to connect to a database from Java using the JDBC, they do it from the main, and it works. But demonstrating that you can connect to a database from a main method isn't a best practice for how do you put together uh, a more interesting application. So once you've figured out using these tutorials that give you the exact code that you need for the main method, we have to figure out what's a nice way of, of organizing that code in a, a larger application. So this is another singleton. We're going to um, make the connection object and we have another one of these public static methods called, in this case, getConnection. And if we are not currently connected to the database, or our connection has been closed, then we will make a connection to the database, and we'll return that connection. So here's the public static method that gives us access to the database connection. and the code that actually makes the connection to the database, I didn't even include it here. So if you're using MySQL or SQLite or um, whatever database you're connecting to, look at the tutorials for how to connect to the database and return a an object of type SQL.connection. So where do you use this? <clears throat> And I've done this in different ways, um, and I, I'm not I'm not sure that I like the way that I've done it for this even very simple example. Um, in the app layer, I threw in this add person method. So when the user interacting with the user interface creates a person object in the user interface, and they say, okay, that's the person's data. We're going to call this add person method, and then we will put the object into the list of people, so that's part of the app data, and then we will add that person object to the database. And whether that should be done right here, in the add person method in the middle layer we're in the business layer whether that should be done here or whether it should be done in the data layer this seems to be a matter of opinion um, and this is again it's a practice I've done it in both ways I've, I've talked to execute the SQL statement in the business layer and execute the single uh, the SQL statements in the data layer. Um, I, I think I would probably prefer that instead of putting this code here where you talk to the database that you should be calling a method in the in the data layer to update the database. So this is um, it's a start. It, it's our it's my objective for having you put together a fairly interesting application without getting everything all balled up. So keep your user interface separate from the data, keep the data separate from the database, and then decide what the fine-tuning is uh, and how you're going to uh, pass critical items from one layer to the next. Well, I hope this was useful, and um, I'm going to see if my classes can come up with using this architectural design for making an interesting uh, Java application. See you next time.